All right, what's going on guys? Tonight, gonna be doing a little machining project. This is probably gonna take me the course of a couple days to finish. What we've got is, we got a pump shaft here. Customer has a well. He's upgrading the motor on his pump for his well. So he had to change some things. So these are factory parts that came with the new motor that attached to the pump. We got a coupling here that couples the shaft from the motor to the pump and he needs me to machine a new coupling out of 316 stainless there's two different sizes of thread on one end versus the other one end is inch and a quarter the other is one inch got one inch left hand thread on one end an inch and a quarter left hand thread on the other one of them is 14 TPI, the other is 10 TPI. So he also wants me to extend the threads down this shaft to that mark right there. And then I have to extend the keyway to that mark as well. And then once it's all done, I'm gonna cut the shaft down to the size he needs it. So we got our stock picked up. This is some two inch 316 stainless stock. So I think we got everything we need. We had some, I had to order some more lathe tooling for this one because it's kind of a special project. I needed uh, an internal boring bar that I could thread with. So I had to order that and I ordered a groove tool. So that stuff showed up. So we should be pretty much ready to go. We're gonna get the stock over to the lathe. Get that baby turning. so we got our piece faced off now we've got the center drill put in our drill chuck we're gonna go ahead and center drill this so we can use the live center we're gonna go to that point okay so it's stainless you want to slow it down keep it nice and oiled up slow it down Just go nice and easy Let it do its thing. Okay, so there's our center drill. Now we're going to set it up to run the live center so that we can machine the whole length of the part we need and then we'll cut it off after. We got our live center and tail stock. And what I like to do is I like to take my calipers. I go ahead and lock them on the measurement I want. And then I'll take and just, well, as this is spinning, I'll go ahead and scribe the mark on where I want to stop. And then that way I have a mark on there and I know right where I got a machine to or a little bit past it. So that I'm sure that I have turned this down enough. So let's get cranking. Pretty light, as you can see it. Now we're gonna touch off. Start with 25 thousand. 
engage our feed. Okay, we're cutting. See that's a nice pretty cut. We're getting a good finish. We're gonna go just a little bit past our line. gonna take our time I want it to stay nice and cool we're getting a good finish so I'm just gonna keep going the pace I'm going and we'll get there okay so to speed things up I know I said we were gonna take our sweet time but you're gonna be a bear be a grizzly so we're running 60 thousandths on this pass you can see it's breaking a really nice chip, so it's going really well, it's staying cool, and we're getting down to the OD that we need quicker, so. And if you want to keep the wife happy, you don't want to walk in the house after tracking all that in there, so. Okay, so I think we actually only have, we're going for 165 and we are, we got 25 thou to go. So, on this one, we're going to touch off, okay, so we touched off, now, we were set to 160, so I'm going to go back to 160, okay, now we're going to go, 25 thou. Okay. Now we're going to be engaged. Fire in the hole. So this should be our finished pass for the OD. And you can see, hopefully you can see that in the camera, but we're getting a beautiful finish. We have some visitors in the shop. <whistles> what are you doing? Uh, yeah. This is the future welder. <laughs> okay. So our lengths cut to size, our ODs cut to size. We're center drilled. And now we're ready to punch a hole through the center. So. Let's take a look at our plans and make sure we get the right size hole drilled. Okay, so you can see we've got an inch and a quarter left hand thread, 10 TPI on one side. One inch left hand thread, 14 TPI on the other. And that's because you've got to mate two different size shafts together. So, if we drill a three quarter hole, we should be good. But I'm going to look up the data on what the minor diameter is on one inch. 14 TPI thread. Okay, We've got our drill chuck put back in. We're going to take out our center drill. We're going to throw in a 916 bit. We're going to pilot hole. We can't be bigger than 925. 0.925. So, we're going to run this one. And then we're going to run. 59 64ths which is 0.918 so that'll give us a little bit to play with we'll take a little bit after that with the boring bar and we should be good here goes nothing we're gonna slow this down got it oiled up good here goes nothing going to wiggle a little bit till we get through the center drill hole. Then it'll stabilize itself. To be honest, I'm not getting the best chips out of that. This is a new drill bit set. I'm going to try to slow it down just a little more.
see if that makes a difference. Stainless is a pretty hard metal. They usually cut better than this. This is a Chinese drill bit though, so there's a good chance it's just kind of a crappy bit. It's doing the job. That's cutting better. Okay, so you want long stringy chips like that. So the one side's cutting really good, the other side you can see it's binding up a little bit. It's still cutting, but it's not, not like it should. The deeper you get, you want to start backing it out once in a while, clearing the chips, because it'll bind up and potentially snap off. So if those flutes fill up with chips and they're not clearing, like the one side's got that nice stringy chip. So it's clearing. But that other side, it's packing full. If it packs full, it starts filling tight. Back it out, clear your chips, re-oil it, go back in. put our 5964 bit in the chuck we're gonna punch this all the way through because this is the minor diameter of the smaller thread we'll punch this all the way through we'll machine it to the minor diameter and then we're gonna have to flip it around and we're gonna have to machine the other side the other side we're probably gonna have to do with a boring bar because we want it to be square in the middle so here goes number <laughs> We got our bore all drilled. We got our boring bar set up. And we're just gonna run a slight pass in there. Just clean it up, make it nice and smooth, and get ready to thread it. Okay, so I'm taking a measurement and it's actually three thousandths shy of where we need to be, which that sucks, but oh well. So I'm gonna start by taking just three thousandths and see what happens. Gonna touch off. Okay, so if you can see that just cleaned it up. It's nice and clean if you can see in there. It's nice and smooth. So should be good to go there now we're ready to thread so I think what I might do is just thread the whole thing and then we'll actually machine out the other side to the correct minor OD yeah I think that's what we'll do okay got our threading boring bar in I've just leveled that you see it's level and now we're ready to start doing our calculations and getting the lathe all set up for our 1 inch 14 TPI Okay, sometimes it takes me a minute to figure these out. Every lathe is a little bit different. So this number here, we know we need eight. So we put that at eight. Okay, 14, and we need A and C. So we're on A and C. We, I also changed this because that changes from left hand to right hand thread. We need left hand, so now it's in left hand. So that should be the ticket. And then we want to slow it way down. So we're gonna go, let's try GKM. I'd say that's pretty good. So I'm gonna run a test pass where I just scratch the surface. And then I'm gonna grab my thread pitch cage and I'm gonna double check that I got it right. You always want to do that before you can just go for it or you end up screwing up parts. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this to you the best I can. So, I've set my stop up on the lathe here so that when I go back, I know how far I've got to go to get past the part that we got to machine. We have to know where we touch off. So what I'm going to do, start the lathe. Okay, I just touched off. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to go past so I don't scratch it. 
I'm going to go to my stop, and I'm going to go back to zero. Now I know it's going to scratch it. Now I'm going to engage my half nut here. You can do it on any number. I usually just pick a number, and if I know that if I go on a number, I'm always good. And if you're not sure, just always pick the same number. Okay, we're rolling. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the lathe. Okay, so here we've got our thread gauge, 14 TPI. And then I'm just going to check it. And we are on. So, now comes the scary part. Okay, the other thing you want to do is you, you want your compound at a 30 degree angle. Okay, so we're square, got our 30 degrees. Now what we're going to do, is we're going to run our adjustment on how much we take off of our compound, not this. We know we're in the right gear, going to cut good. We know where our stop is. We know we're left hand thread. i mark zero here. Okay, so we go back to zero here. We're going to take five thousandths of a cut on our threads. We're going to engage it on three on our half nut. I'm going to slow it down one. So we go back in a hundred thou to clear it. Go into our stop, come back a hundred thou to zero, adjust this five thou for our cut, engage, and then we're going to go three on the half nut. Okay, so slowing that down took our chatter away. That's good. You don't want chatter. You don't ever want chatter. Okay, so it's a slow process. I've got just a little bit of a dull edge on that insert, so I'm going to switch it. You're probably not going to be able to see that, but that's there's an edge on that that's not really sharp anymore. So I'm just going to flip it one. Back to zero. Make your adjustment. So now what I'm doing I got the boring bar back in. I figured out what halfway is and I've marked the shaft. I did the math and I marked where that was on the ID. So now I can run my feed and I can watch my digital readout here and it's going to count down because I've marked where the center is. So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to engage my feed. You can see it's traveling. Okay. It's cutting. And now I'm watching this count down. When that gets close to zero, I'm going to disengage the feed. Okay, we're coming up on it now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to come out of it. And then we'll check our measurement. So we need to go. We got about 95 thou to take, and I'm taking 30 thou a pass. So I'll take a couple more passes, and we'll be there. Because we've got a thread from the left to the right, because it's left-hand thread, you have to cut a relief. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but I've cut a relief. I've got my boring bar here with the groove it's got a grooving insert on it so I just snuck that in there and it's probably about 50 thou deep I'm hoping that's enough now we're gonna put in our 
threading bar and see if we can't get this side threaded it's almost 10 o'clock so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get this done tonight and then I can work on the shaft tomorrow so let's see what we can do we're getting ready to thread this other side <clears throat> I got the lathe all set up according to my chart I've got the threading bar on everything's set up we're zeroed here we're zeroed here and I'm actually using this to know how far in I need to go so that I drop the threading insert into the relief groove so I think we're ready to go all that's left to do now is give her the onion so here we go it's gonna take a while let's go into warp mode Okay, we got her all threaded. I just checked the fit, it's right on the money. So now I'm just gonna chamfer the inside and outside corners, just dress it up a little, and that'll finish up the coupling. Okay, so there's our part, 1 inch, 14 TPI on the one side, inch and a quarter, 10 TPI, both are left hand thread. I think I'm going to go to bed because it's 11.14, and then we'll see if we can't knock out the uh, shaft tomorrow, nighty night. Okay. So we got our coupling all finished up. Now we're gonna start working on the shaft. So I've got it chucked up in the lathe here. Got our live center put in. Um, I think what we're gonna use to cut our relief, we've gotta thread it. We've gotta continue the threads down to here. But because we're cutting left hand threads, we gotta start here and meet up with these threads. This is really tricky because if you don't match this up right when you get to here you'll completely destroy these threads and then it's junk so we've got to cut a relief right here in the end where we're going to start threading from we've got to match these threads and i'll show you guys how i do it so we're gonna we're gonna get the grooving tool all set up and cut that relief right now we're going to mark our line of how far we have to thread it. Okay, so I just take my Sharpie and let the machine do the work. It gives you a nice solid line. Okay, I'm going to stay this way of the line. Because it doesn't matter if we thread a little bit past, it's not a big deal. We're going to 
I think we're going to cut our groove in first, then I'm not swapping tools back and forth. So I'm going to hurry and cut that. We're going to slow the lathe way down, keep it oiled, and it should, should cut nice and clean. I'm going to use one of these button inserts. You see it's round. If you can, you're always better off to have a groove with a radius versus a sharp 90. Because right in the corner of the 90 is where cracks are likely to start and things can fail. I'm not saying that that's what would happen, but if I can make it better and give it every chance to not do that, then that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll just put us a little radius groove in there about an eighth deep. You see how we're not getting any chatter? That's what you want. Just nice smooth cut, smooth chips. Try to keep consistent pressure. Looks good. Nice clean groove. Okay, so that's where our threads are going to start. So, now we got to get our threading tool in here. We need to match this. Everything has to be in sync with the machine. If it's not, then no bueno. This is not good. So we got to make sure that we match these threads perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it matched up and we're going to run some practice runs and make sure that our threading insert and make sure that our threading insert is right in that groove and follows the machine. So we've got to get that right first before we come back here and thread. So. Okay, so it's all oiled up. We're ready to go. We're zeroed here, we're zeroed here. I've adjusted it in five thousandths because I want to do a scratch pass to make sure these threads line up. Okay, I think that's it. Here goes nothing. I'm going to fire it on one. line up with the outer diameter or the major diameter of the thread, which it does. It's kind of hard to see on camera. Okay, so I'm going to back this out, 100 thou, disengage. We need to check this. Always good to check your scratch pass. It's hard for you guys to see, but yeah, it is. Okay. So, now it's time to get serious. We'll just keep it oiled up. I hope everything lines up here. The only other thing I'm worried about is they've had to cut a relief here. They didn't cut as big of a relief as I did, but they did cut one there. And I just hope it lines up okay to where we can spin the nut through that spot. We can, it just needs to hit just right. Let's do it. We'll just keep cutting. I'll put it in warm mode so you guys don't fall asleep on me.
All right, we got some tools. Everybody loves getting tools. Had to get some threading stuff to finish this off. This is a angle gauge for if you grind your own tool steel so that you can get a perfect 60 degree angle because that's what angle threads are. Got an edge finder set so it's got four different types anyway I'll have to show you. Carbide that's $120 worth of carbide right there that's why I can only afford to buy them four at a time and then a left-handed threading tool holder which is mainly what we were missing so we're gonna get this over to the lathe get it set up and finish that shaft out let's do it so just so you guys understand the one on the left is a left hand the one on the right is a right hand so because we're cutting left hand threads machining in this direction we have to have this tool so that this leading edge is cutting what was happening is this edge right here I had already cut so deep that this edge of the metal was rubbing but if you have this, this front edge cuts. It helps cut as you go. So we're going to swap this out. See if we can't get everything lined up back the way it was. That's the tricky part. And then we'll see if we can't finish this off. Alright, so here's what's going down. I was able to finish. If you can see that. There's one funky thread right there in the middle. That's where the old relief was for this section of threads from the original shaft. This is the section that I threaded. There's no way around that because when you cut left-handed threads you have to have a relief where you start your insert and then make the cut. And so you, that's why you have to match where these threads are. If you don't match these threads with these threads, the nut will not make the transition from this section to this section. So I was able to file it down to where the nut will go past. It's nice and smooth. There's minimal slop. You got a little bit of slop there, but that's where the transition is. So. I think it's going to work fine. So that's what we got going. So now I've got to finish milling the keyway out. It's only got to go about an inch, but I got to finish milling the keyway to the end of the threads. We'll get that done and then that should be it. So let's get it in the mill. Okay, so I'm just taking a steel ruler here, I'm setting it in that keyway, and then I make sure that it's tight, marking it, doing the other side, marking it. I'm gonna take my centering head, and I'm gonna mark dead center of that, and check it with the centering head to make sure this is square with the machine. Okay, so I've marked this side, this side, I don't know if you can see it, but I got a, there's a little dimple there. Smacked it with a center punch, the center. Okay, so then I take my centering head and I put that right in my center punch dimple. Set it up square. Okay, so we're that, we're that far out. So we've got to adjust. Okay, so we should be good that way. I also like to check and make sure 
that it is level the work is level with the vise which it is and it should be because it's flat it's flat on the surface of the vise so it should be good okay so now we're gonna get our carbide end mill throw it in we'll probably use a collet get that set up and then we're ready to make some chips okay so here's our collet with our end mill you know what I think I've got an end mill holder for this let me look I do not have the right end mill holder so I'm gonna put that on my list that's a mile long of all the things I don't have okay fire in the hole okay looks like we are centered so now I'm gonna get some oil we're gonna start the feed okay, it should be going into the cut here you'll hear the pitch of the mill change there she goes grab the key we're gonna check it it's a little tight so we might just run it back once we might be able to just hit it with a file just took a little emery cloth cleaned up the edges key slides all the way to the back it's good and tight Okay, we got this back in the chuck. We've cut it off in the saw at 34. I'm just gonna chamfer this and check it again with the nut, make sure it screws on nice and smooth. That's where we're at. Go ahead and chamfer this, and then we'll take a look at everything when it's done. Okay, here's what we got. Keyway. Slides freely, but not too loose. Okay, we threaded this section. We've chopped it off at 34 inches. We got our coupling done. It's inch and a quarter, 10 TPI on one end, one inch, 14 TPI on this end. They're both left-hand thread. It's good and snug. there our nut screws on I'm gonna clean it up with brake cleaner when I'm done but it was a challenging project internal threading is always harder than external threading getting two sets of threads to join each other on left-handed threads that's a challenge we decided to go with radius relief on this. Just thought it would look nice. It's also stronger. So, I think that's gonna wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.
and he's upgrading he's upgrading the motor on his pump for his well so he brought me this shaft which is factory part comes from the factory and what he wants me to do is I need to extend 